All right. Well, um, good morning to those of you who are uh, currently located in uh, in U.S. or Pacific time. Um, actually, before we start, I want I'd like to run a quick uh, audio check. So if you can hear me, uh, could you type yes real quick in the chat box just so I know that everyone um, is on the same page? Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, we got a couple. Yes. Okay. So, um, all right. Well, welcome everyone uh, to this webinar. I'm very happy to, to be here. I would like to, first of all, um, introduce you to uh, Stefan, uh, who is the founder and CEO of Subly, uh, who's here with me today. And uh, besides welcoming him to the, to the webinar, I would like to thank him uh, for the opportunity to, to be here and tell you guys more about Referral Candy. So, Stefan, uh, hello and, and thank you. Hi, Raul. How's it going? Great, great. No, happy to be here. Uh, happy to talk to you guys more about uh, about referral marketing, about word of mouth sales, uh, and what can that that can do for for some of the businesses. Um, yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to actually run us through this today as well, Raul. Just want to say that. And um, guys, I've spoken to Raul before a number of on a number of occasions. Uh, referral candy really know what they're talking about. So uh, I hope today's insightful and. Uh, yeah, I'm really pleased to have you uh, attending, and also for Raul, thank you for um, you and your team for um, putting this together for us. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. No, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so, for those of you who don't know me, uh, so my name is Raul. I'm the partner manager at, at Referral Candy, um, and just to give you a quick overview of what Referral Candy is and what we do, we are a referral program software for online stores. Um, we mostly work with small and medium online retailers, uh, but we've had some, some big brands that have trusted our, our, our service uh, to run the referral programs. And, and actually, I like, I like this slide because it also uh, explains that we work with a several number of, uh, of industries. We really don't have any sort of boundaries in terms of what type of um, industries we work with. So uh, some examples here. So Uniqlo, uh, they make clothing. This is great. It's footwear, Blue Smart, they make luggage. Uh, Reebok is well, Reebok. We all know Reebok. It's uh, it's clothing and sportswear, and Tidal. Uh, it's actually uh, JC's Spotify competitor, so it's software, um, and all of these companies have um, used them as in the past. And uh, we are Subly partners, so we um, we are working closely with uh, with Subly to get all of you guys uh, a referral program for your subscription box business, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, and before I dive in, um, I would like to, to uh, say to everyone that if you have any questions at any moment during the webinar, uh, feel free to, to write your questions on the chat box. Uh, we'll stop several times during the webinar to, to answer them. And uh, I mean, even though this is uh, a presentation, um, this is, I want it to be a conversation with you guys. Uh, we're, both, we're both here for you guys. So if you guys, if you guys have any questions or it's something that's not clear, uh, we'll be happy to stop. And, uh, and answer those questions, okay? So these are the four things that we're gonna be covering today. Um, so the first of, first of them is that, uh, what is a referral program? So for those of you who don't know uh, where a referral program is, uh, we'll give a little more details on, on how it is and how it works. Um, the second one is that we're gonna give some tips on how to run a successful referral program for your store. Um, just ha just by having a referral program itself, uh, it's it's not magic like anything in business. It's not magic. You need to put some work into it. And there's there are several lessons that we have learned over the past few years. Um, and so we're, I'm going to share those lessons with you guys. Um, then I'm going to show you how referral candy itself works and and how the referral cycle works. And then at the end, uh, we'll go over the, the integration. So how referral candy works, uh, how it integrates with uh, Subly stores. Okay. So the first step is going to be uh, what is a referral program. Now, for those of you, I mean, you guys are are business owners. Um, I can tell you right now that if you guys have customers, you already have uh, referrals. You already have word of mouth sales. The main difference between just having um, word of mouth sales coming to your store and having a, a proper uh, referral program set up in your store is that. Without a referral program, there's no way for you to know really if you are getting referrals. So how many are how many referrals are you getting? Um, what source of your revenue? Uh, you know how how many sales are you getting from that, and what's the percentage of the total sales? Uh, and also, um, it's a great way for you to know um, how much money uh, are you spending on different marketing channels because referral candy, uh, sorry, referral candy, referral programs are actually 
uh, one of the best ways and one of the most affordable ways of uh, getting new customers on board and we're gonna go over some details to to show you guys that um, I'm pretty sure that most of you guys remember this referral program it's it has been one of the most famous referral programs in the world uh, it's the uber referral program it's uh, get get ten dollars and get ten dollars to your friends I'm pretty sure that all of us who have uh, uber on our phone we have opened our accounts using a, a friend's referral link or, or referral coupon and we met our friend make some money or get some free rides and we also got um, some credits to use on our store so to use on the on, on uber to use on, on our own and so that's actually uh, that has been a great way for uber to increase uh, their customer base but besides uber there's a lot of other companies that have used referral programs successfully in the past and we're gonna go over a few examples um, that our marketing team has put together they have done a lot of as you can imagine a lot of investigation uh, on referral programs and so this is uh, these are some of the examples that we're gonna go over PayPal um, that was actually probably one of the most successful referral programs along with with uber and Dropbox that we're gonna see in a little bit uh, thanks to the referral programs they achieved up to a 10% daily growth which which is a lot it's it's crazy uh, and especially uh, back in the in the 2000s early 2000s which is the early days of the internet and so what they did is that they were basically giving away free money um, now I mean it makes sense uh, because it's it, PayPal because of the nature of their business um, it's a financial technology product and so they needed people to trust their software um, to to uh, buy online uh, to send money to to their friends so by giving free money to both the advocates and the friends um, they were able to have a customer a growing customer base and also to kind of teach them how PayPal worked so they spent about 60 million dollars on their referral incentives which is a lot of money uh, for for any marketing budget but it helped them get to like I said before up to a 10% daily growth and they grew their customer base to over 100 million members um, so that has been an example of a success, uh, very successfully um, uh, implemented referral program and especially during the early days of PayPal when they just needed to um, to get a lot of users to get as many users as, as, as possible uh, so they could actually start um, growing within their marketing strategy. So that was actually um, a great way for them to start acquiring users. So it worked so well um, that Elon Musk took this the example of the PayPal uh, referral program and, and send it and, and, and implement it again on their uh, on the Tesla Motors marketing strategy. They had kind of a similar uh, referral program where they were giving money or free money to both sides to both the advocate and the friend who has been had been referred and they were giving one thousand dollars to both of them now if you think about it um, one thousand dollars for the advocate so which is someone it's who is a, a Tesla customer that has bought a car and then talks to their friend about their the Tesla car and recommends it to the friend giving a thousand dollars to someone who has already spent between seventy thousand and a hundred thousand dollars on a car, it's it's probably not it's not that that's not that necessary for them. Like they don't really need that one thousand dollar to to refer to the friend. They're mostly doing it uh, for the sake of it, just because they're happy with their car and they want to talk about it. Um, but if you think about it, it's it's more more than the financial uh, reward that the advocates getting. It's more like, hey, do you want a test like that? Look, I'll just get you. Uh, I'll be able to get you a one thousand dollar discount. It's not a lot, but it means something. So. That's something that we'll cover uh, in a little bit. It's about how the rewards work for both the advocate and the friend and how sometimes you need to think about over the financial incentive and think about how are you making your customers feel when they recommend your store to their friends. Are they getting your friends, a, are they getting, sorry, their friends a really good deal? Then they're probably gonna feel better uh, about referring your stores just because of they're getting their friends a really good deal more than for whatever they're getting uh, themselves as a reward. So we'll go over uh, some details um, later, uh, some other examples. Another great example of our referral program is Dropbox. I'm pretty sure that most of us here have been part of it. Um, they got 4 million users in a little bit over a year. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this this page where you'll be able to, you, you were able to get, I think it was like half, uh, actually yeah, half a gigabyte for every friend that you refer. Um, and 
thanks to the referral program, Dropbox went from 100,000 users to 4 million in, in 15 months, less, less, than, less than two years, which is also crazy. And uh, the, most, the most interesting part of the referral program is that they were able to get customers, to acquire customers um, at a way cheaper price than with traditional ad spend. Uh, for a $99 product, which was uh, a Dropbox, uh, the traditional ad spend is between $200 and $400, which is a lot. And if you compare the numbers here, uh, they were able to, to get these users on board for way cheaper. So that's something you need to keep in mind as well, is that it's a very, very affordable way of getting new users, basically because you're turning existing customers into your marketing team, into your sales team. So they already know about your product because they're already buying from you. Uh, they know all the features. They know how it works. So they're actually able to answer questions uh, from potential customers. So think about that. Uh, think about that as well uh, as financially, you know, how, how it affects your business to have a referral program running versus uh, having traditional Google ads, Facebook ads uh, running in parallel. And so these three examples, um, are three uh, cases that I picked from, from uh, this epic list of 47, 47 referral programs that uh, our marketing team put together. Uh, it's on our blog if you guys wanna check it out, if you wanna get ideas for your referral program. There's a lot of different industries, there's a lot of different uh, reward systems that the, these companies were given. And something that they have in common, all these programs, is that they were uh, very successful. So of course, it's always great to copy ideas from successful uh, programs. And I brought this one uh, specifically for, for you guys. Uh, this is Dollar Shave Club. I'm pretty sure that all of you guys know it here. Um, they're also running their referral programs. Uh, they were given $5 to the advocate and $5 um, to the friend. And it eventually, it helped them gain over 3 million subscribers just from their referral program. So that, those are uh, great numbers as well. So now we're going to go over the second part on how to run a successful referral program. So I've given you guys uh, a few examples uh, of successful referral programs, and they have they have several things in common, and that's what we're gonna go over right now. We have seen thousands uh, of referral programs over the past almost 10 years, and so there's a lot that we have learned uh, from successful programs and also from uh, programs that didn't work, and that's actually how how you learn, and that we we saw those mistakes and we saw examples of on mistakes that you should not do when running a referral program. So that's something we're gonna cover in a little bit. Um, I'm gonna get a sip of water. Uh, this is a great way for you, a great moment for you guys to um, to answer, to ask any questions that you guys have here in the chat box. And so we can uh, actually answer them before we go on to the second, the second part. So we, we had a question, I'm gonna go back a um, few slides. <laughs> so PayPal, uh, the PayPal case. Uh, so we had a question uh, about what's the 60 million, the cost of implementing or the cost of money giving away as part of the campaign. So yeah, so the $60 million that PayPal spent on their referral program, it's uh, referral incentives. So that's money that they send to the advocates and the friends, uh, it wasn't the cost of uh, implementing any sort of software uh, or any sort of uh, referral program uh, it's, itself, um, and uh, but it's yeah, it's the money that they that they gave uh, to both parties of the of the referral program. And let's go over a few more slides. Uh, and as I mentioned here, um, the the cost per uh, cost per uh, uh, customer um, for acquiring new customers, you can you can actually reduce it a lot by running a referral program on the side, as I mentioned before, because it's, it, I mean, it for, for some of our customers, for some of the most successful programs, we have seen up to 25, 30% of the revenue stream came directly from referrals. So if you think about that, if you are putting that in a balance with their ad spend, sometimes uh, we see more companies 
directing more resources or or actually uh, spending less on ads because the referral program is working so well that they can reduce their cost per uh, per user that they that they have acquired. So it's as a part of a marketing uh, marketing strategy as part of the mix, uh, it can help you actually reduce that cost per cost per user. So. Let's go over uh, the second part, so it's how to run a successful referral program. Uh, as I said before, we have learned a lot over the past few years from, from thousands of, uh, of e-commerce stores that have run referral programs on Referral Candy. And I want you to think about your own business for now. Um, during this second part, and actually uh, hopefully during the entire webinar, <laughs> but just in case you hadn't thought about it, uh, I want you to think about what will more getting more word of mouth sales do for your business. So picture your business uh, getting more word of mouth sales. Uh, what would that mean? Uh, what, type of, uh, what type of customers you see that will be more loyal to your product? Think about it. Uh, think how you can implement all these strategies that I'm gonna share with you because honestly, these three tips that I'm gonna share, um, you don't need to have a software implemented uh, to, to run your referral program. But this is just tips on how to get more customer uh, to talk about your brand and to, to get more referrals from it. Obviously, if you don't have a referral program in, in place, uh, it's, it's harder to track uh, where this referral is coming from, but at the end of the day, this, these are marketing strategies that I'm gonna share with you that you can use, use on your store uh, to get more referrals. So I'm gonna divide them in three. So the first, the first one is why should people refer? So why will your customers refer you in the first place? So make, how to make it easy for them. The second one is about how to give simple rewards that match your customers because different stores have different type of customers uh, and those customers have different uh, purchasing behaviors. And so it's always good to adapt the rewards to both the new customers and the existing ones because referral programs are actually a great way to also retain uh, and engage with your existing customers. And the third one is to um, how to ask for these referrals and how to do it in a smarter way. Okay, so we'll go over uh, these, these three tactics. So the first one is, why should people refer? So why are they referring you in, in the first place? So think about your customers for now as part of your sales team. If you want a successful sales team, the first thing that they need to do is that they need to uh, perfect their pitch. They need to know exactly what they're selling, what your product is, um, and they need to share the value that your product has. Now, having a good product sometimes is not enough. You really need to have good positioning and, and really let your customers know what your brand's about and what can your product do for them. And so for that, this is something that if there's any marketers in the room, I'm sure you have seen this before. This is a, uh, a technique that we use both internally at Referral Candy for ourselves and something that we, uh, when we talk uh, when we talk to our customers about it, um, we, we use this with them so they can improve their position and, and improve their messaging. So this is called the good, fast, cheap pyramid and how it helps you to refine your message. So let's, let's go over a quick example. So this is an example that, that I built this morning um, while I was having my coffee because it's a, it's a great example. Um, you have to pick two sides of the pyramid so you can either be good and cheap or fast and cheap or good and fast, okay? So let's, let's go for the coffee example. Now, if you're like me, you need to have a cup of coffee in the morning before you do anything, at least that, that's my case. And so every morning I have three options. So one of them is to make my coffee at home. So I go to the supermarket, I buy the coffee, um, and even if I buy like super expensive coffee at the end of the day, um, the cost per cup, it's, it's nothing, it's cents, it's less than a dollar probably. So I make that coffee at home, um, I put it in my travel mug and I take it to work. And so that's good coffee, it's good quality coffee, and it's cheap because at the end of the day I'm spending less than a dollar per cup and that's, that's nothing. Um, and, but of course, it's not the fastest option. I need to go to the supermarket, I need to make sure that I always have coffee uh, in, in my kitchen, I need to make it, uh, I need to prepare it and then to put it in the travel mug. It's, it's not the, the, the most efficient uh, way. Now the second one, my cafe here at the bottom, um, it's fast and cheap because you just walk into McDonald's. I mean, McDonald's is all about fast food, so everything uh, that they do needs to be fast. 
Um, so you just just walk in, and within a couple minutes, you can get a cup of coffee for what, like a dollar or two. That's that's nothing for a cup of coffee that you're getting um, outside of your house. So that's that's their their uh, their positioning. They're positioning themselves as fast coffee and, and cheap coffee. That's the second option. Now the third one, it's Starbucks. We all know Starbucks. You're paying around four, maybe five dollars for a cup of coffee, depend depending on on your taste. So it's good coffee because I mean let's 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 be honest, it's like it's a good cup of coffee. Now they're actually they're opening uh, a different type of uh, stores where it's like even like gourmet coffee and you can pay up to fifteen dollars per a cup of coffee. So well, it, it kind of improved their messaging uh, in the sense that look, this is not cheap coffee. We're not going to sell you cheap coffee, but you're paying for uh, quick service because you just walk in. It's the same as a McDonald's. You just walk in, and within three to five minutes, uh, you'll have your coffee ready to go, and it's good coffee. But it's not going to be cheap. You're going to pay for it. Now, let's imagine that all these three, including the coffee that you make at home, um, let's think that these are brands, and they're telling us what their messaging is. So, what what their message is. So. Think about it. If you were going to promote Starbucks to your friends, this is what you probably say: Look, it's good coffee, and you can get it. Um, you can get it in like in a few minutes. I mean, of course, you're not going to pay uh, what you pay at McDonald's, but it's you know you're really paying for quality. If you had to be an advocate for my cafe, you would say: Look, it's it's fast, it's cheap. You know what else you need in the morning? You know you're not gonna even gonna you're gonna be half sleep. You're not gonna be able to taste it anyway. No. So they both have uh, a very defined messaging that their advocates or potential advocates uh, are, gonna share, are gonna be sharing to their friends. So we, you need to pick which side you're going to dominate. Now, I know that you guys are, are business owners and of course, the last thing you wanna tell your customers is, hey, hey, look, we're fast and cheap, but we're definitely not good. I mean, no, obviously, that's, that's definitely not the messaging, but you really need to go, uh, you need to strive for all three. You need to be able to be good and cheap and fast uh, as good, as cheap, as and as fast as you can, uh, depending on, <clears throat> sorry, on your product and what you're selling. But at the end of the day, you need to focus on two. So, for example, us uh, at Referral Candy. I mean, of course, we strive to have a great product, and we have a design team and a customer support team that works really hard every single day uh, to to improve our our product. But we strive for we we strive for for three, but we focus on being fast and being cheap. Why? because we're focusing on small and medium online stores and they need a product that is cheap. You know, they don't need a, a, an enterprise type of uh, account. Um, and they don't need enterprise pricing because they can't afford it. So we, we offer a pricing that, that fits them. Um, and so it's, it's a cheap pricing and then it's fast because we want every store to get a referral program up and running ASAP. So as soon as possible, in just a few minutes, you have your referral program uh, working. And so that's what we strive for. And of course, having a good product, but that's always that's something that all business owners always go for. So, at the end of the day, what we're trying to say here is that you need to let people know why they're going to refer you. Your customers need to know exactly what's the value that they're getting from you, because when their friends ask them, "Okay, why should I buy from this store that you're recommending?" They'll say, "Look." because this is their value proposition and this is how much it costs and you know if you combine both you get a, a good product a good price and you get a um, good quality product or look um, they're they're very cheap and they also have it shipped in less than a day or you have your whatever you guys sell ready um, uh, in a few minutes so that's what you need to tell your customers your customers need to know what's the pitch that they're gonna use uh, for their friends. Basically, as if they were your, your sales team, like I said before. So that was that was the first tactic. So why people refer. Now, once once they have referred their friends, uh, the, probably one of the most important parts of the referral program are the, the incentives, uh, the, the rewards that you're giving to both sides, to both the advocate and, and the new friend. You need to be smart about this because you need to encourage the friend to to make a purchase, but if you can also take the opportunity to to increase the user retention on your existing customers, that's something you should definitely think about because it's you know if you're getting a customer but you're losing another one, uh, that's that that's that's not the point. The point is to uh, engage and and make your customers more loyal and 
uh, actually help them to get more customers uh, to, to sign up more of their friends. And this is actually the main difference between running an affiliate program and running a referral program. Uh, sometimes when I get on calls with retailers and they tell me, yeah, we have, uh, we want to set up an affiliate program and we want to give, let's say, $100 uh, for, to, to our advocates for every new customer that they bring us. I usually say, look, why don't you give something to the friend? I mean, think about it. Uh, if you don't give anything to the friend, if you don't give any sort of offer, what's their motivation to buy from the advocate? There's no motivation other than, oh, my friend's getting, uh, is getting a, a commission from it. So that's something you need to really think of when you're setting up a referral program is that both sides are equally important. Sometimes referral programs focus a lot on getting the new users in, but there's, there's more than that, and we're going to cover that. So these are some of the shortcuts that we have learned over the past few years. You need to keep it simple. Your referral program has to be extremely simple for everyone to understand. You're competing for attention. Um, and so you, your, your customers, your advocates need to understand in two seconds what the referral program is about. I've seen referral programs that, I don't know, are based on points that the advocates get. So if you refer a friend, you get 100, 100 points and you can turn those 100 points into, uh, into dollars, but then you can only use them for certain products that we have selected for, for you. Look, that's, that's probably great. I mean, it, the, the fact that it's um, very complicated, let's say, it's, it's probably good because you have thought about it a lot. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's, your customers can understand. If, you're, if your customers are not able to understand what your referral program is about, they're probably just going to drop it or they're not going to see the value right away or they're not going to see, you know, what's, the, what's, what's, in, what's in, in this deal for me uh, to, to refer this store to my friends. So keep it simple. These are some examples, uh, the example of Uber that I mentioned before. Uh, the one on the right is Dapper Time. It's one of our customers. And it's very simple. It's, look, get $10 for every successful referral. Obviously, they're giving something to their friends as well. Also, something you need to think about, which is what I mentioned about the financial incentives, that sometimes it's not the most important part of the deal. It's that think about social status and making the advocate look like a hero. And this is a great example that I always like to, to share. It's, it's Audioblox. Uh, it's one of our customers, and they sell um, loyalty-free royalty free music for audio engineers and for music producers. And so this is the ad that they have on their, on their website. This is the, um, the, the, the call to action that they have on the referral program. It's like, get rewarded and make your friends love you. Give your friends 90% off an audio block subscription, just $99 a year. You get rewarded with $20 for each referral. Now, if I look at it, if I think about it, okay, I'm getting $20. And that's, that's nice. I mean, getting $20, why not? But I'm giving my friends 90% off. Like I, I personally know music producers and audio engineers, especially music producers actually, that would love to get a deal like this. Actually, I mean, I might as well just recommend this to my friends just because it's gonna be a, such a good deal for them. It, it, it feels like I found something great, like I found them a really good deal. They're gonna be happy that I was able to them, uh, save them a lot of money uh, for, for sending them my referral link. So. At some point, you don't really care that much about the twenty dollars that you're getting for each referral. You 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 care about doing something nice um, for your friend. It's kind of like a similar to the example of Tesla that I mentioned before. Look, the person um, the person who who already bought a Tesla car doesn't need a thousand dollars. They they're already making a lot of money. But the fact that they can give a thousand dollars to the friend um, who is already thinking about buying a Tesla car is like, oh, I mean, yeah, why not? I'll get the discount. You know, that's nice. They're probably doing it for the sake of talking about the brand and, and talking and saying good things about the brand more than the financial incentive or like the, the referral commission that, or the cash they can make uh, out of it. And this is a great example uh, that I always like to, to share. We were talking about user retention before, and these are, uh, this, this, this is, uh, explains everything. Um, so the, the one on the left is rebel.com. They sell websites, uh, hosting, um, all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, they give 25% off uh, Rebel.com to the friend. And you, as a Rebel.com user, you get 20% off your next purchase. Now, this makes a lot of sense because 
if your customers are coming, are buying from you, are already buying from you um, on a frequent basis, let's say once a month or a couple times a month or you know whatever it is, giving them a discount, it's going to in increase your user retention. Let's say I am uh, a developer or I'm a project manager and I need to set up a website for, for a client or I'm an entrepreneur and I'm having uh, some businesses uh, running at the same time. I'm probably going to buy a lot of domains often. So someone who buys domains, probably someone that's going to buy more than one domain in their life. So for me, as a Rebel.com customer that I was once a customer, if I refer a friend and then I get 20, $25% uh, off on my next purchase, next time I need to buy a domain, I'm not even going to look at other prices. I already have a $25% uh, off on Rebel.com. There's no need for me to go outside and, and look for competitors or look for other prices. No one's going to be able to match this offer. So you need to think about that. And in terms of, um, of uh, subscri subscription box businesses, um, if you offer your customers uh, a, a, a discount on future subscriptions, um, you're increasing the retention because you know, it, it will be stupid for them to not to um, continue being your customer if they're already getting a discount from, you know, from, from referring their friends. Uh, so you retain that customer, and since you're giving a discount to the other friend, that discount might help the friend who is maybe not 100% sure about joining the, the, about subscribing uh, to, your, to your business. That $25 off, that is $25 off or 25% off or whatever the, 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 uh, the offer that you're giving to the friend, it's going to help them be like, okay, you know, why not? Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's take a look. Uh, let's see how it is and see if I like the product. So that, that triggers this first purchase. On the other side, um, we have, uh, you need a budget. This is uh, a software company and well, it's a, it's a, it's a software that you install once in your computer and then that's it. You don't need to buy any more subscription. Uh, or do you, I think actually you, you buy it, you download it, and then that's it. You don't ever have to buy anything from them uh, ever again. So for them, it, will be, it will, wouldn't make any sense to give a discount to, uh, to, for future purchases because I'm literally not going to buy from them ever again. Even if I love the product, there's no need for me to buy, to buy it again. So um, as you can see, they're... Referral program is also very simple. It's give $6 and get $6 for each referral. Uh, but they decide to go for a cash reward um, instead of giving a discount on future purchases. So this is matching. These two examples match uh, the, customer's, uh, the customer's behavior on, on your business. So this was kind of like a lot. <laughs> it was kind of a, a long, a long uh, example. Uh, but just as a recap, um, keep your referral incentives simple. Give ten, get ten. Uh, give twenty five, get twenty five. Whatever you want, but keep it simple. It doesn't have to be the same. You can give uh, get a hundred dollars uh, of discount and uh, get fifty percent off your next purchase. Whatever it is, but but you need to be able to to summarize it in one line. The second is think. Think beyond financial incentives and think about social status and how you're making your advocate look like in front of your friends. You know, if they're making your advocate look like a hero for getting such a big, such such a great deal uh, to their friends, that'll be awesome. So that's something that you need to encourage too. And also, uh, think about user retention and set up the rewards in a way that matches your your customers' buying behavior. That's gonna help you get more customers, but also retain the ones that you have. And let's go over the, the third one. Um, actually, uh, I'm gonna stop real quick for to get another sip of water. That was, that was a, long, a long talk. Um, I'll be back in, in 30 seconds. In the meantime, I see we have an, a question uh, that I'm gonna answer as soon as I get back. Um, if you guys wanna type a, a question, 30 seconds, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so we have a question that is actually about the triangle, which we just have it here. Um, so the question says, I'm struggling working the triangle out for my business. We have a subscription for send candles. Uh, there are various price levels, but this it is a luxury product. Okay, so you're telling me that 
you you can't um, you can't sell it as a cheap product, and that's fine. Uh, we saw the example of, of Starbucks before. Actually, I'm just going to go back. You saw, we saw the example of Starbucks before. They don't want to. They're a luxury product. You can call it like that. I mean, buying probably spending more than four bucks for a cup of coffee it's, it should be considered a luxury. Um, but that's it is what it is. Uh, if your product's not cheap, you you should never strive for for being cheap. Um, so we have two options here, which is being good and being fast. Um, so let's say if you're able to deliver quickly or faster than your competitors. Uh, or if you're able to, let's say your customers are able to customize the candles. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm talking here uh, without really knowing a lot about what your business does. In particular, I'm just trying to like throw some ideas here. Um, but uh, if you're able to, let's say your customers are able to customize the candles and get them um, uh, at the doorstep in a matter of a couple of days, uh, that's something that you can strive for. And that's something that your customers can use um, to talk to their friends about. It's like, look, I just bought this. It's a great candle. I bought it, uh, and then a couple of days later, I had it in my house, and it's really good too. I mean, it's 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 not it's not cheap. But, you know, it's not a it's not a cheap product, but it's really good, and and and, and it takes just a couple of days to get here. That's something that you can uh, that you can say, uh, Stefan. I don't know if you uh, have something in mind for. Yeah, I, I think um, I think the key point here is though that it's about just getting the message right. So even if you don't cover off like two points in the, the triangle, even if it's just one, so say, you know, luxury candles, for example, you're, you've, you've defined it already, like you are a luxury candle service. So yeah, exactly. you could really, really push that and emphasize that you don't necessarily have to like try and take off that you're cheap or, you know, you don't have to talk about the pricing of it because it's a luxury candle. Exactly. It obviously goes with what I'm saying that you, you know, it's going to be expensive. And this in terms of fast, like, you know, I guess if you're delivering a, a product, if you're delivering it fast, that's part of your service. But you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be good, fast, and cheap. It could just be like you know, good and really exceptional service. For example, I think yeah. it, the key point though is that it's about refining your message and making it as easy as possible for your uh, advocates to actually sell your product for you. So, whatever your main point is that you're pushing, that's what you want to make clear to them. Exactly. It's it's about making it simple. Uh, think about uh, when you when you are talking about uh, word of mouth sales. You need to think about your customers for a second. Think about your customers not as customers. Um, but as your sales team. So make it as easy as possible for them to talk about your brand. And they're already your customers. They already know your product. So, uh, you know, they know they, they know what they're getting, but you need to help them explain it because that's, that's sometimes it's, it's a hard part. You, you, you know why you like something and you know why it's something good, but you can explain it. So if you have that, um, that message very defined, um, that, will, that will help you. So okay, so let's go over the last uh, the last part of this uh, of the the three tactics that I'm sharing with you on how to get more uh, word of mouth sales. So it's how to ask for referrals. This is something that sometimes uh, e-commerce stores kind of forget about it because they they really focus on uh, on on the message. They focus on the on the rewards that are given there to to the advocates, but they make make mistakes that should not be made um, and that actually can compromise this the success of the referral program. So these are actually two examples um, of referral emails that you can send to your advocates so they can forward it to their friends. Uh, as you can see, it explains perfectly uh, the what the referral program is about and they include a link that they can share with, with their friends. And that's actually, at least here in Referral Candy, that's how we can track their referrals. So here it says, uh, forward this link to, to your friends and, and you can actually, these emails are very uh, very well crafted, so you can just forward it. You as an advocate, just, you can just forward it and your, your friends will, uh, will receive this in their inbox. But when you as a store send an email to your customers asking for a referral, it's, it, it, it's very important. It's very important to think about when you send it. Um, and there's a there's a strategy behind it. Let's go let's go find out. So this is a common mistake that I've seen uh, from many stores. I hope that none of you guys have done this. Uh, I mean, it's fine. It's it's not a it's not a deal breaker, but it's something that it's it's very important in terms of um, when when to send uh, a referral email to your customers, and it's basically hiding the referral link in the invoice. 
So when I make a purchase online and I receive an email with my invoice, I just look at two things, maybe three things. Uh, how much it was, just to make sure they didn't get overcharged for you know whatever tax or all oh, the shipping was right, everything. Um, I'm looking at the the billing address to make sure that's that's uh, that's right, and I'm looking at the shipping address as well. So this are those are probably the three things that I care about. I don't I don't care about I don't know what the headquarters of the company is. I don't look at that. Um, I don't look at you know other details or what the what's the invoice number. You know that doesn't that doesn't really matter to me. Um, what I care about is these three things. Now putting a referral link on an invoice. It's just asking for your customers to not look at it. They're just gonna miss it. They're not. They're not gonna be able to see it. And even if they see it, is it really the perfect timing for them to refer your friend to refer you to their friends? I mean, they they haven't received the product yet. They had just made a purchase. They don't know if they like the product. They don't know if they if it's what they expected. So asking for a referral when your when your customers um, when your customers are uh, you know just looking at something else. Uh, and when your customers are not focus on on the value that they're getting from your product, it's 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 actually worthless. And uh, actually, I like Stefan the point that you make here is that obviously nobody likes looking at receipts and being reminded that they spend money. Exactly, <laughs> that's a, that's a great that's a great uh, sentence, and it's true. Uh, you you know, the invoice is just something that okay, you know, it's there in case you have to double check, but you know, it's not nice for everyone. unless you're sending the 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 invoice yourself and you're getting paid. Otherwise, um, it's not really something that you like looking at. And the second mistake that you make by putting uh, the referral link in the invoice is that you're assuming that ASAP is the best. Um, so again, you're just because I have your attention as a customer, that doesn't mean that I want to refer you yet. I might want to refer you, but I really want to know. Uh, what I'm getting out of this, you know, even if the product, I'm not going to refer a product that I don't like, or it turns out that it's not what I expected. And so, the best moment to send a referral email to your advocates is to it's when your customers have received value and they can vouch for you. So, thinking about uh, subscription box businesses, um, give it time for to, to to prepare the uh, to prepare the the shipping to let let the box get to your to your customer's house uh, let your customers use it maybe you're selling I don't know like camping outfit or camping um, products and so if they receive it on a Monday and then you send them an email uh, to refer this uh, camping um, uh, camping products to their friends on a Thursday they probably didn't really have time to try it Maybe that's something to do after the weekend when they, you know, they actually go camping. So think about your customers. Think really about your customers and when do you think it's this, the, the exact moment that they get the value from it. And that's when you figure that out, that's the best moment to send an email because they, they already love your product. So why not? You know, if, if I'm also getting something out of this, I'm getting a, a commission or I'm getting a discount on a feature purchase. Yeah, of course, I'm going to refer you. And you also need to keep in mind that only some percent of your customers are ready to refer. That's just human nature. Some customers just don't like uh, advocating for, for products and you just need to think about it. So how do you, actually how do you solve this? Uh, you need to make sure that the customers that are going to be talking about your store are reminded that there is a referral program in place. Guys, if you talk about the brand, this is what you can get. This is what your friends can get. Keep it on top of their mind. So when you know when someone breaks a um, uh, breaks a shoe, you're like, hey, uh, actually, I just you know I just know this online store that sells great shoes. I actually recommend it. You know, be on top of their minds. So whenever they hear about someone talking about your product, they'll be like, oh yeah, actually, uh, I can recommend you this store. Actually, I can give you a I can get you a discount. You know, their friend will be like, okay, yeah, sure, that, that'll be great. So. Keep it on top of the mind. Um, share on social media. Send emails. Remind your advocates that the referral program exists, that they can benefit from it, and uh, also put it on, on put it on your website. Make a reminder on your website so so people um, get to know that that exists. So these are the three tactics uh, to get more word of mouth sales. Actually, what I explained to you guys here, you don't you don't need referral candy to 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 do this. Uh, but of course, having a referral program and having a referral software implemented on your store helps you track and helps helps you uh, see how you know what you're getting out of your referral program. But 
what we talk here, it's 100% just marketing strategy. So think about the pyramid and think about the messaging uh, for for when when thinking about what's the pitch that your advocates are going to use. Think about the simple simple rewards and make it make it simple for your customers to understand what they're getting out, out of your referral program. And also uh, think about your customers and their purchasing behavior and adapt the rewards to increase retention. And uh, on the the last thing we, we spoke about is how to ask for referrals and how to do it well and how to make sure that you are on top of your customers' minds uh, all the time. And now let's let's go over uh, how does referral candy work. So now we have seen how to run a, a, a referral program. We have seen some examples of programs that, that work well and, and, and some of the strategies that these programs um, uh, implemented. And now let's see how how a referral candy works on, on five steps, which I like to call the cycle, the referral candy cycle. First step, we give um, we give your actually uh, Stefan. I don't know if you would like to jump in real quick. Hey, yeah. Um, first of all, uh, I just want to mention that there is a guide on how to integrate referral candy into your Subly store. Um, I don't know if I can actually post this so everybody can see it, but I'm just going to send it to you now, Raul, if you want to share that with everybody. Um, yeah, so basically there, there are five main steps, and actually you could almost call it four, but it's very straightforward. Um, if you go into the guide that Raul's about to share, um, you'll be able to click on the link, first of all, to sign up to Referral Candy. And then, there you go, thank you. Um, oh, you know, are you sharing that with uh, with me, I believe? Yeah. No, I think that says it's to all, yeah, yeah, yeah good, but it's, good stuff. It's actually a link, so let me share it again, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, no worries, uh, I'll, I'll carry on anyway. So ba basically, yeah, if you click on that link, you'll see there's an, an article which kind of takes you through the, the five steps. It's actually technically uh, four. But just to make it clear, we split it into five. Um, so it's it's really easy. Once you've signed up um, to Referral Candy and the links on the guide, um, you, you just need to go in and, and grab the, the JavaScript code for the specifically the advanced JavaScript only integration. Um, and then what, once once you've got that code, you, you'll, what you also need to do is uh, copy and paste your app ID and the secret key from your Referral Candy uh, account settings. Uh, and paste them into, um, when you're in your Subly account, you'll go to the left-hand side, uh, and there's like a, a design and then marketing. If you click on marketing, there'll be a little drop-down, and then you click on tracking codes. Now, what you'll do is you'll paste the JavaScript code in there combined with your app ID and your secret key, uh, and then you'll also need to make a couple of adjustments, um, which are specified in the uh, article, the, the guide, um, which are, are to basically, they're, they're like variables that get printed out into the HTML at the time of conversion. And what this all, all this will do is um, this code will be executed when your customer finishes their checkout process um, and it will inform Referral Candy in this case that um, you know there's been a purchase and it will give the relevant information so Referral Candy can then execute and implement the, um, the campaign on their side. So if you follow the guide, it's pretty straightforward and, and that's it. it it doesn't take long it literally takes about uh, probably at most 10 minutes um, and then obviously you'll need to actually set up your campaign with referral candy as well to get the emails and stuff set up but um, yeah that's pretty much it uh, from from our side um, and then you can start to leverage the power of you know word of mouth marketing and, and just to also add in um, I, I know we're running tight on time now but um, you know oh, in terms of my yeah, in terms of my experience of like uh, referral marketing and word of mouth marketing, like I'm a massive, massive advocate myself for the form of marketing because, you know, as part of the primal brain, and I'm getting down to psychology here, um, as, as humans, you know, uh, we survive by sharing information and that's how we've done so well because we're actually able to communicate effectively with one another and, you know, amongst other reasons, obviously, but it, it's very, very, very inbuilt that when somebody recommends something to us, that we actually listen if it's somebody that you appreciate and trust, you know, like a good friend or a good family member. So providing you're able to trigger that referral and somebody actually opening their mouth or typing on their keyboard to tell a friend about your great, your business, your great product and your great offering, then it's a super effective way of, of growing and scaling your business. I mean, you know, as uh, as Raul mentioned, the the... The Dollar Shave Club uh, one was an absolutely prime example for that yeah. uh, amongst all the other ones. And and those ones, 
they're not completely out of reach. So, I mean, providing your service and your product is exceptional, and I'm sure it is, then, you know, this is a really great mechanism to leverage. Um, and I just want to say that. So yep. that's, that's, that's all from me for just now. No, exactly. Um, the, the fact that uh, PayPal did it and Dollar Shave Club did it, um, you know, why not? Why not any other uh, subscription box business or why not any other business uh, can do it? If you have a good product um, and people believe in it and people like it, it, it will just happen naturally almost. Yeah, thank you for um, for doing this presentation actually today, Raul. I don't know yeah. if you've got any more to go through actually, but I'll, I'll let yeah. you finish up if you want. Sounds good. Yeah, um, I just wanted to actually we just went over the integration, um, so that's great. Uh, so I just uh, let you guys know that um, actually at the end of the webinar, so in about in a few minutes, I will uh, send you guys a, a referral link. Actually, I'm just going to share the link with you guys right now. Um, if you follow that that referral link and you sign up. Um, you'll be able to get, um, we'll apply actually two extra months of, um, of uh, a free trial. So our standard free trial is 30 days. Um, will you get 90 uh, from it? So you can get everything up and running. And, and uh, for, for the time that you, you start actually paying for a full candidate, you'll have, you, hopefully you already have uh, referral sales coming in. And so just a quick overview on how, how referral candy works. Um, so the first step is John. Uh, John gets a referral link. Um, John shares with the friends when the friends ask him, hey, what do you get that? Sure, uh, here, they, I got it from Shirts for Us. Um, and this is a referral link that you can use to get, uh, I don't know, 20% off. In the meantime, we're tracking everything. So referral candy allows you to see uh, how many referral sales you're getting, uh, how much revenue you're getting from it. Um, you can even compare it to your industry average of referral programs. It's, it's something that we implemented very recently. Um, Alice. Uh, decides to buy the shirt, uh, uh, uses the, the, the discount and buys the shirt and uh, John gets an email like this that says, hey, thanks for referring us, uh, here's your $10 um, reward. Actually, we send the rewards over PayPal so that you guys don't have to worry about, uh, about that. Uh, so we send out the rewards or we give out the discounts, whatever you guys decide to, to give. And we help you promote it to Alice, which is our, your new customer. And we're pretty sure that Alice will be happy to, to share it with their friends. So that's how the cycle works. And I was going to go to uh, some other examples, but I really, I think we don't really have that much time. Uh, actually, we just covered uh, a lot of examples here. Um, so what I'm going to do is that, um, yeah, I just shared the link with you guys. Uh, actually, if you guys can, could type yes in the chat box just to make sure that you receive both links, both the, the one from Sabli on how to integrate uh, referral candy and, uh, and the other link. Okay, yeah, I see a couple of yeses. And we're going to dedicate this last couple of minutes uh, to answer some of the questions that we got here. Um, I have one for you, um, uh, Stefan. Um, there's actually one from Samantha that says, can we get a link to share on Instagram as well? Uh, yes, so the thing is that we... We work with links, so the the link it's 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 the most crucial part because that's where uh, the friends need to click, so we're able to track it to track the activity. Just the coupon itself um, wouldn't work because the coupons are whatever coupons you guys have on your on your store. So the link, yes, uh, as long as you can paste it on your and put it on your on your Instagram bio, um, yeah, everyone will be able to to follow it, and you can track um, those um, those referrals. And so, Stefan, are you around? Yeah, I'm here, yeah. Great. So I have a question for you. I don't know if you can see the question from Anthony. Um, no, I can't actually, um, okay. unfortunately. But you know, if you want to share it with me, I'm, I'll answer it. Great. I'll read it for you. So says Anthony says, hi, I have a handmade organic macarons monthly box. We started to sell two weeks ago at farmer's market to get a street credibility and get feedbacks. People love our products. Uh, they even come back next week to get some. How would you connect this street credibility to online boxes? We have a coupon code that we give a farmer's market and we also show the gift um, the gift box there. It might be too early to know if it's a good strategy to get subscription, uh, how to connect street and subscri subscription box. So how would you bundle uh, these two together? So connecting offline to online, is that right? Am I hearing that yeah. right? Yeah, so how to, yeah, how to connect the, the offline business to the, to the online one. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, sounds delicious, Anthony. Um, <laughs> When am I getting my uh, macaroons? <laughs> yep, yep. Um, yeah, no, so this one's a, a really good question, actually. So 
we we've had multiple people on our platform who do like pre-made you know like meal delivery services etc fresh you know fresh food produce and they do sell at their you know farmer markets and stuff so this is not uh, uncommon um in terms of connecting offline to online i would suggest that you would set up a laptop or an ipad or something like that at the actual market um so you'll be able to actually get customers to sign up there and then rather than trying to like catch them after with like an email i would also get their email as number one anyway but say hey like you know i've got your email but like like if you want to go through the checkout process right now then here's the ipad and have you know make sure you've logged out of the last customer who's checked out though because that will slow the process down and make the person feel anxious so make sure you've logged out of their account and let them go through the checkout process and load it up for them. Um, that That's one way of doing it. Um, and then obviously if you've got their email address already, you can follow up. But the the key is you want people's you know buying temperature to be nice and high by the time that they're actually there with you, talking to you face-to-face, -face, experiencing the product. Um, it's a really good time to then get them to go through that checkout process. So that's why I would suggest, um, you know, always open to uh, suggestions from other people to answer that question um, in different ways. And even, you know, uh, if you have any feature requests, uh, we always take those as well and consider them for, um, you know, future product development for Subly. So we can maybe bridge the gap even better with um, the offline to online world. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, I know that's, and I'll also add something uh, from the referral side. <laughs> um, so something that you can do as well is that uh, you can have them, it's, it, it goes, actually, it's just pretty much what, what Stefan said, actually, uh, that you can uh, set them up on the referral program right away. If you, 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 I mean, from what I read here, uh, you say that you have customers that come back to you uh, after the, the first week. So they buy, they, they buy from you and then they come back for more. Those are loyal customers. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they are already talking to their friends about your product. Uh, so I'm pretty sure there's already word of mouth uh, happening there. And so why not having having them set up on their referral program right away while you're there, while you're, while you're, while you're chatting uh, with them because you already know that you know they're they're coming back. You already know their faces. You you, know, you can start a conversation with them in the meantime. Be like, look, um, actually, you know, if you if you have any friends that will be interested, um, I can get you. You know, this is the referral program that we have implemented. I can get them a discount. I can get you. Um, uh, you know, a little incentive for 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 doing it uh, as a thank you. You know, for for sharing uh, our brand with with your friends. So that's something that you can do as well. And with the same strategy, having an iPad or having a computer there, uh, you can have them literally. The only thing, actually, I'm just gonna, uh, if you don't mind, uh, step I'm gonna show uh, an example of mm -hmm. how how you set how you set up someone up uh, as an advocate. So this is 22 Day Nutrition. It's one of our customers. Um, they have a like a part of the website here, it says, do you love 22 days? Uh, actually, 22 day nutrition is also in the food business. As you can see, they they sell uh, like a protein, protein shakes, protein bars, etc. Um, so you click here and learn more. Uh, you will get a landing page like this. And literally all you have to do is enter the customer's email address here. And that's it. And then they will receive access. They'll, 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 they'll get them access to something like this where they can get their own uh, referral link and they can share it and they are able to also here uh, track their their awards. Um, so I, I guess you could just say that like you could have that set up on an iPad, um, yep. you know, where you're set up at your farmer's market and then it'd be really easy for you just to continue putting emails and names into that. Um, yep. But yeah, that's a really good point. And yeah, I, I think what you guys have got going on at Referral Candy is really great, by the way, just to say that. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for the for compliment. Um, uh, Oh, and before we, before we move on from that, actually, Anthony, um, maybe if you do one macaron for you know uh, every ten, <laughs> then that, that would be very incentivizing because you know, like, uh, who's who's going to say no to food? <laughs> exactly. Actually, um, you can also so uh, one of the options that we have for fall candy is that you can also set up your own custom reward. Um, of of course, the only thing there is you'll have to handle shipping, but we have we've had some stores. Uh, that sell food that instead of giving money or giving discounts to the advocates, they give uh, like a some sort of like free product or they give them a gift card or they give them like a, a t-shirt or something like that. So that's, that's also something that uh, you, you can, you know, you can think also outside of the box. And if your products, if your customers love your product so much, why not getting another one for free, you know, or getting enough credit to buy, to buy another one for free. Yeah. I love that one. That's a good idea. Yep. Um, so, uh, yeah, so actually, uh, that's pretty much it for today. Um, we really don't have any more time. We have our, already overpassed uh, our hour. So 
if you guys have any questions, uh, here's my email. Feel free to, to email me if you have any other questions. Um, I shared the referral link with you guys. Uh, if you sign up, you'll get uh, up to um, up to three, three months for free on, on referral candy. Um, so again, Stefan, thank you so much. I uh, hope that the, the marketing, the referral marketing techniques that I share with you guys help you. Even if you don't, like I said, even if you don't set up a referral program, uh, that that's something that you can do on your store to, to increase your, your word of mouth sales. Uh, so Stefan, thanks again. Uh, it was been a pleasure to, to be here. It's our pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, sharing all this information and knowledge today. I really appreciate it, Raul. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.